All right, two dimensions. There are different ways to, to write vectors. You'll notice in your book, an arrow. The length of the arrow is the magnitude. So, you know, kind of when you draw arrows, use reason. We're not, we don't have graph paper. I don't expect graph paper. This is not kindergarten. You can sketch and be reasonable. So if one vector is, is 10 and the other vector is 5, draw them appropriately. The angle at which the, the arrow is represented matters. So if we say it's to the northeast or 45 degrees, then kind of sketch your arrow appropriately and close enough. Another and the length of it. So angle and length need to pay attention in your pictures. In the book, sometimes they use A with an arrow over it or a letter with an arrow over it. I will use that notation sometimes. That means that whatever that thing is is a vector. And textbooks usually use a bold faced letter because it's a whole lot easier to do that than write letter with an arrow over when they're writing the book. So when you're reading in the textbook and they have a bold faced letter, that thing is, an, is a vector. It's just a way to deal with it. All, right. All vectors are equal if they are the same length, the same angle, and representing the same thing. So we can have multiple arrows on a page, multiple vectors, and they can be very similar, but if they're talking about different things, then we have to be mindful of that. So keep track of that in your pictures. Keep track of things so that you don't mix up vectors. So when we're adding velocity vectors, a velocity vector plus a velocity vector can be added. A force vector and a velocity vector cannot be added because they're different things. So that's something to pay attention to. How do we add vectors? How do we draw a picture? I'm never going to ask you on an exam to draw me some vectors. This is solely for your benefit in solving problems and drawing your picture. Chapter 1, the picture was kind of useless. Chapter 2, the picture began to be helpful. Chapter 3, the picture is going to be vital to your ability to solve the problem. And so learning to sketch correctly what you're looking for will help. What do we do? I'm going to give you only one method. There's 500 different ways to sketch it. The only one I believe in that works consistently is tip to tail. So we have two vectors, vector A and vector B. They're drawn at the top. If I add them, so vector A, and I can, the, the thing about vectors is just because it's drawn at some point on the page doesn't mean I can it means I can, I can redraw it wherever I want. Because what did I say about the vectors? There's only three things that matter, right? The length, the angle, and what it is. I didn't say where it, it was drawn. Because where is a vector drawn? It's drawn from the origin. Where is the origin? Wherever I want to put it. Right? So I can move this vector. So I can take vector B, move it up, and draw it like that. Tip to tail. Draw whatever the first one is. A, draw A. Plus B, draw B. Wherever A ends, start drawing B. Wherever C is, if we have A, B, C, we'll see in a second. So A plus B, the resultant of A plus B, the new vector, is go from the beginning, go to the end, from beginning to end. And the black one is the new vector. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Remember, tip the tail, what does that mean? Draw the first one, then draw the second from wherever you are. Let's do an A plus B plus C. So let's say we have a C like that. So there's C, vector C. Three different forces, three different velocities, whatever. Well, we draw A. A is drawn nicely for us. We draw B. Something like that, right? Looks about like B. So we have, we're looking for A 
plus B plus C. And that's going to be my resultant vector, whatever it is. Well, now I take C. C was straight down. So there's C. A plus B plus C is that. So that's R. It is important to be able to sketch what that looks like so that you can estimate where it should be, what it should be based on the numbers that you get so that you can start guessing where things are. How do we subtract vectors? Subtracting vectors is just adding them. It's adding the negative of the second one. So A, so if we have A plus A and B, A minus B is going to be A plus the negative of B. Well, what is the negative of B? What do you think it is? It's just going to be in the exact opposite direction. So take B, the negative B is going to be that. Just flip the vector around. So there's negative B. A plus A minus B is now, this is my tip to tail of that. Again, I'm not going to ask you on an exam. This is for your benefit to be able to solve problems. If we multiply a vector by a scalar number, so velocity times 2. This is pretty straightforward. There's A multiplied by 2 is twice as long. Doesn't change the direction, just changes magnitude. If I multiply by a negative number, I've reversed it, right? That's the negative of it, and then negative 0.5 or negative whatever. So 0.5, negative 0.5 times A is shrink A by half and flip it around. All right. Components. Now we're moving into stuff that you will need to do because if I draw a vector, the sketch is only so much for us. You already know that I'm going to ask you to grind out actual calculations, which will require numbers. Well, what is a vector? Let's step back. If you thought way back to when you were in probably third grade, maybe fourth grade, somewhere in that range, your teacher gives you this number, three, four, in brackets. What, would, what is he or she asking you to do? Plot that, that on a grid, right? All right, so what would you do? Come on, you forgot how to do this? You would go over three, right? One, two, three. Why do I go over three? Because the first one is the X, second one is the Y. All right, you go over three, and then what would you do? One, two, three, four, and go up four, and you put a dot there. All right. A vector using the same notation is the 3, 4, except for we just start at the origin and draw our arrow to that point. So if I give you a vector, if I gave you the vector, you can find what's called the components, the 3, 4s, those X and Y chunks of it. So any vector is just an arrow drawn from some origin. Where is the origin? Where I want it to be. And I'm going to put it at the tail end of the arrow. And I have an X, Y set of components that I can write as 3, 4. That's one way to write it. Or whatever the numbers happen to be. So if I gave you the, the, the components uh, negative 4, 2, what would you draw? Over 4 in this direction, and up 2, and you'd have some vector going out like that, right? That's the vector. Now, 
nine times out of ten, you don't have a nice grid. What do I give you? I give you an angle and I say the vector is, you know, the velocity is 30, 30 meters per second at 20 degrees above the horizontal. That's what I'm going to tell you most times. Some number at some angle. What I'm giving you is this theta and the r, whatever the length of that arrow is. You will need to figure out the x, y pieces of it, the components, so that you can do the calculations. You will not be able to do any calculation using that number. Unless that number is a component. So that would mean my vector would have to be vertical or horizontal, right? It could not be at any other angle other than those. Hence our favorite saying, Sokatoa. I will always write it this way. I never put the H in there. This is a personal choice because I write way, way, way too many H's in my life. What is my name? Heath. There's an H at the beginning and an H at the end. What is my last name? Hatch. There's an H at the beginning, there's an H at the end. Okay? I'm just plain lazy. That's all it is. And I also know that, so what does this read? Sine is opposite, so sine is, of this angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? I know that sine and the cosine are always over the hypotenuse because I'm too lazy to write H now. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. What do we mean opposite? Opposite of the angle you're dealing with, right? So if I'm dealing with this angle, that's the side that's opposite it. And this is the adjacent side. If I'm dealing with this angle up here, this now becomes the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. How come this is not the adjacent side? Because by definition, it is the hypotenuse. One other thing about Sokotoa and using these sine, cosine, and tangent. Sokotoa only, only ever works with right triangles. It does not work with triangles that are not a right triangle. And what is a right triangle? This is back to like grade two. One of the angles is 90 degrees, right? Now, hey, when we're starting to draw vectors, you're going to be drawing lots of right triangles, figuring out what is the right triangle that goes with that vector, because the vector is actually the hypotenuse side. Figure out the right triangle that goes with it and do the calculations. Magnitude. Forgot. I want to find the length of the vector, and I know the components, then I'm just going to use our favorite other formula. Starts with the P and ends with Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem, that's all that is. This is just the Pythagoras theorem. A squared equals B squared plus C squared, or whatever. C squared equals A plus B squared. That's all that is. And you're going to be using that lots to find things. Hey, some of you are going to get in the habit. And you're going to say, okay, well, if I want to find this side, I'm going to use sine. If I want to use this side, I'm going to use cosine. That's what I'm looking for. That's not all. What do you need to pay attention to with that? Where is the angle you're dealing with? And what side is opposite and adjacent? Because if I have, if I want to find the x component, in this case, it's going to be, if I look back at this formula, rearrange it. I'm going to get that Ax is A times cosine of theta. 
and the yx, which I can write here or over here, whatever I want, is going to be a sine theta. Now, that's if I have given you that angle. If I give you this angle, things are reversed now. Pay attention to where the angle is. That is the most common mistake that people make with this. Is they just get into a habit and they don't pay attention to where the angle actually is. And that's where drawing the picture helps you prevent yourself from making that mistake. And what are the AX and AYs called? They're my components. That's the, the term we're going to use, components. And we label them because we're going to, you know, we have a velocity. We're going to have, we're going to start dealing with velocity. We have a velocity of 30 meters per second. You're going to be asked to find the VX and the VY. Worse than that, it's going to be a VX initial and VY initial. You're going to find the VX final and the VX initial. I mean, VY final. You're going to be finding those things. So instead of having four or five knowns and unknowns, you're now going to have a lot more of them. And you're going to need to deal with things in the X and Y components separately. So if you want a slide that kind of just simplifies it, you can do that. Or just remember Sokotoa and pay a little bit of attention. Sometimes we will use this notation. There's multiple ways of notation. One of them is the number, so 30, and then you'll see a little x hat, or 30 and a little y hat. Those x and y hats are just there to label what direction they are. If that number represents an x direction. That number represents a y direction, a y component. So I have a vector A. So vector A is, is this here, this one here. The components, another way to write it as opposed to the 3, 4. Another way you'll see it written is AX is the actual number. So it's this number times X hat. Because it won't be AX, it'll be 3, right? 3X hat plus 4Y hat. The 3 is the X component, the 4 is the Y component. So we can, you'll see it written this way and you'll see it written this way. They're the same thing, just a different way of writing things. Almost interesting, right? Almost. I know this is not interesting, but this is, if you get this, it makes life easier. If you don't get this, it makes life harder. Hey, we're not done yet. Hey, if I give you some numbers in that format, you should be able to sketch in your mind where, or on your paper, where it is. So two, three, written as a 2x or 3x, whatever way I write it, will be somewhere in that quadrant. If I change some signs, a negative 2 and 3 goes in that quadrant. Negative 2, negative 3 goes down like that. 2, negative 3. When you see the numbers, pay attention to the signs and pay attention. So if you're asked to draw a picture, draw the arrow in at least the right general direction. 